Hello viewers, today I am going to discuss very important judgment of the Supreme Court of India which has been passed in Santosh Prashad vs. State of Bihar in Criminal Appeal No. 264 of 2020 in which Supreme Court held that conviction of an accused in rape cases cannot be done on the basis of sole testimony of the prosecutrix unless she passes the test of sterling witness. It further held that, in order to convict an accused on the basis of solitary evidence of prosecutrix, the evidence must be absolutely trustworthy, unblemished and of sterling quality. That sterling witness should be of a very high quality and caliber, whose version should therefore be unassailable. To test the quality of such a witness, I repeat, to test the quality of such a witness, the status of the witness would be immaterial and what would be relevant is the truthfulness of the statement made by such a witness. What was the main case and what were the main brief facts of the case? Now let us discuss point wise. What was the case? The prosecutrix filed a complaint against her brother-in-law, the appellant or accused on 16th of September 2011, alleging that he had raped her on the preceding night. On the basis of the statement, an FIR was registered against the appellant and investigation was carried out. On the conclusion of the investigation, the investigating officer filed the charge sheet against the appellant under section 376 subsection 1 and 450 of the Indian Penal Code and the additional session court tried the case. In the case, the appellant pleaded the innocence. In order to support the prosecution, the prosecution examined eight witnesses along with the prosecutrix and the medical officer. Out of the eight witnesses, three witnesses did not support the case of the prosecution and they turned hostile witness. That the learned trial court had sentenced the accused to undergo 10 years regress imprisonment for the offense under section 376 of IPC and seven year regress imprisonment for the offence under section 450 of the IPC. That subsequently, the appellant filed an appeal before the High Court. Therein, the appeal was dismissed by the High Court. Aggrieved from the decision of both the learned session judge and High Court, the appellant made the present appeal before the Supreme Court. In the Supreme Court, what was the contentions of the appellant? The advocate appearing on behalf of the appellant argued before the Supreme Court that the courts had materially erred in convicting the appellant. He argued that unreliable medical evidence, material contradictions in the depositions of the prosecutrix and delay in lodging FIR created serious doubts on the credibility of the prosecutrix. He further argued that conviction of the appellant had been done under section 376 of the Indian Penal Code on the sole testimony of the prosecutrix. And since material contradictions existed in the medical evidence, so it became unsafe to convict the appellant on that basis. So these were the contentions of the appellant and what were the contentions of the respondent? Counsel appearing for the respondent state stated that ordinarily the evidence of the prosecutrix should be believed as no self-respecting women will come forward in a court just to make a humiliating statement against her honor 
as is involved in the commission of rape on her. He further argued that merely because the medical report was inconclusive, their inference of innocence of the accused could not be drawn. After hearing both the sides what the Supreme Court held, Supreme Court allowed the criminal appeal and acquit the appellant from all the charges leveled against the appellant and held that version of the prosecutrix could not be taken as the gospel truth in the absence of any other supporting evidence. So there was no scope to sustain the conviction. The Supreme Court further held that there were material contradictions in the evidence of the prosecutrix and it was now reliable and trustworthy in order to convict the appellant oblique accused in the case. Supreme Court further held that even though ordinarily sole testimony of the prosecutrix was enough to convict an accused of rape, but the court could not lose sight of the protection of the accused against false implication. It held what was stated by the Supreme Court of India in the present case. It cannot be lost sight of that rape causes the greatest distress and humiliation to the victim. But at the same time, a false allegation of rape can cause equal distress, humiliation and damage to the accused as well. The accused must also be protected against the possibility of false implication, particularly where a large number of accused are involved. So this was something about the present judgment. Thank you.